Welcome to the setup video for the SEMA MPC milk pump controller. When the power is first applied to a new controller, the SEMA logo is displayed for the first five seconds, followed by an informational screen which gives the software version number and the model of SEMA controller. Then, because this is a new controller, a screen is displayed asking us to press enter to continue. There is no other valid option, so now we press enter to continue to set up. There's an informational screen informing us that the controller is initialising itself, which basically means it's blanking its memory and getting ready to do a new installation. Another informational screen follows just informing you that you can push escape at any time as you're going through the setup to go back to the previous step if you realize that you've made a mistake. You can do this indefinitely, you can keep pushing escape until you get right back to the beginning of setup. Um, we'll demonstrate this as we go. So now when we're ready we'll press enter to continue. First thing we're asked is the type of shed. Uh, we use the up and down arrows to scroll through the selection. There are four possible settings. First is herringbone, second is rotary, third is double up, and the fourth is other for options that aren't covered here. If we were, we were to push the up arrow again, it would wrap back round to herringbone, or of course we could have pushed the down arrow to step back through the menu. Press enter when you've selected the correct shed. Next we're asked how many sets of claws are in the shed. For the sake of this demonstration we'll assume that the, the shed has 30 sets of claws and we'll press enter to continue. Now the type of pump. Available options are centrifugal, impeller, diaphragm, or other. And if we push the up arrow again we'll wrap right back round to centrifugal and we'll assume that this shed has a centrifugal pump. Once again we could have used the down arrow to go back down through the menu as well. Press enter at this point and centrifugal will be selected. Now to demonstrate how figures are changed um, using the keypad um, we're going to pretend that this is a 240 volt motor. Now the cursor, which is the little horizontal line under the number, is moved left and right with the left and right arrow keys. We're going to push the left arrow key once, and the cursor will move under the two. We're going to push the right arrow key now, just to demonstrate how we move the cursor, and it moves back to the zero. So now we're going to change that to 240 volt. So we'll push the left arrow key again, and we'll push the up arrow twice, and we've got 240 volt. If we wanted to reduce that 4 to a lower number, we could push the down arrow. Um, yes, go ahead and try it. And up arrow takes it back up to 240 again. No figures are entered until you push the enter key. If you discover you've made a mistake, just push escape to go back to the previous step and the number that you've put in there will be erased. Okay, we'll push enter at this point. Now let's just pretend we've discovered we've made a horrible mistake and we shouldn't have put 240 in there. So let's push the escape key. It says going back and we're back to that and it automatically erases that 240 and puts the default value of 220 back in there. It'll do that for all of the parameters. As soon as you go back to a parameter it erases what you've put in and puts the def default value up on the screen. Okay, so let's leave it at 220 for the sake of this demonstration and push enter. Okay, now the motor current, let's assume it's a 9 amp motor and we'll push enter. Uh, motor nameplate RPM, once again this default value has been set because we told it it was a centrifugal pump which typically have a motor nameplate RPM of about 2800. If we told it it was an impeller, it would have set, I think, 800 RPM as the default for an impeller, etc, etc, etc. We're going to assume that's right. It's probably not going to be quite right for the motor you use, so you'll have to go and put what the actual 
nameplate RPM is. It's probably going to be 2820 or 2840 or something like that. Actually, just uh, for the heck of it, we'll make it 2840. So push the left arrow once and push the up arrow until you get a 4 in there. And now push enter and that figure will be saved. There we go, now it's asking us what maximum speed w that we want. And you'll notice with all these parameters there's a max and a min figure that comes up. Maximum speed's a little bit different to the others, all the others had absolute values. This one has got a minimum of 500 RPM, but the maximum is two times the nameplate RPM of the motor. We're not going to go that fast. Um, we'll go to, let's say, 3000, just to make it a nice round figure. We're actually over-speeding the motor. The controller will do that automatically. So use the combina a combination of the arrow keys to adjust that to 3000, if you would. And you could do it that way, but it would take an awfully long time. So go back to zero there. Go left once. Take that down to a zero. Go left again, and go up until you get 3000 in the display, and push enter. Okay, minimum pump speed we're going to leave set for 1700. Once again, that minimum default value is put in there based on what type of pump you select and what type of shed you select. So, 1700 is about right, let's push enter. Now, the maximum level setting, this is an auto setting here and what you can do when you're out in the field is just go and lift the float up to where you want the maximum milk level to be and uh, when you do that the figure will change on the screen you, you can then let the float go and it will remember the maximum height you lifted it up to we haven't actually got a float connected here in the office and the default minimum of oh, sorry the app the minimum is 10 percent that's why 10 percent's come up but it doesn't matter because when we push enter we get the option of changing it manually and what we'll do is use the left arrow to go across one digit and the left arrow again to go across another one we'll push the up arrow once and it won't work because we've exceeded the maximum if it had to put a one on there it would have been 110 percent and the maximum is a hundred percent so what we need to do is push the right arrow to go back underneath the one and push the up arrow and again until you get to a hundred. If you possibly can, try and run uh, all of them at a hundred percent. Push enter. Um, it gives more leeway for the EcoFlow algorithm to work if you've got more permissible a higher permissible maximum milk level. Motor direction check. When you push the up arrow, the motor will run. You can now go and have a look at it. It'll only run very slowly and only for a couple of seconds and you can decide if it's running in the correct direction or not. If it is, well and good. You can press enter and carry on. If it isn't, turn off the power, wait till the screen on the controller goes completely dark swap over two motor wires to reverse the direction of the motor then turn the power back onto the controller again and you'll be brought back to this place in this in the setup so that you can try the direction again and proceed from here so now press enter okay operation mode by default it's eco flow eco flow uh, which other manufacturers call constant flow strives to keep the flow of milk through the heat exchanger as or plate cooler as low and slow as possible and to do this it allows the level in the can to vary over quite wide limits. It's quite a clever algorithm and it works very well and it results in a much lower milk delivery temperature to the vat. Um, it's always best to run an eco flow mode if you can. If you can't for some reason, for instance if you've got a plant with excessive froth or one that's prone to flooding during wash, pushing either the up or down arrow 
we'll change it to conventional. And conventional is just like any other variable speed uh, uh, controller on the market. As the float goes up, it speeds up the pump. As the float goes down, it slows the pump down. Okay, so because we're just doing a demonstration, we'll leave it on conventional and let's press enter. Okay, pump out time. This is how long the pump continues running for after it's already at the bottom. Adjust that to whatever you like. We're going to leave it at 15. Press enter. Next we have the empty can interval. When you're running in eco flow mode, the can will sometimes never empty because the pump tries to run at as low a speed as possible. Putting a time in here, which is in minutes, tells the controller to pump the can out and empty it every 10 minutes in this case. Maximum of 60. If we set it for zero, that function is disabled. We're going to leave it at 10. If, if the can empties itself naturally in less than 10 minutes, that timer is reset. So um, there's really no harm in leaving that 10 minutes there. Press enter. Okay, and now we've got the congratulations screen and it's saying that uh, this is all successfully set up and ready to run. So just press enter and we'll be running. And there we are, there's the running screen. Uh, the, the operation and running of the pump is covered in a separate video. Thanks for watching. Uh, all of this information is in the manual, so if you have any doubts, just have a look at the manual. Thanks. Bye.